Following months of non-stop leaks and speculation around AMD's Ryzen chips, we finally have some official notes on the base specs, core clock, things like that, and the pricing for the Ryzen lineup. We also have, critically, some of the names officially this time, and that starts with the Ryzen R7 series of chips. Of course, we would expect more would come later, but for today, all we have officially is information on the R7 chips. So the three main ones are the R7 1700, and this is low end to high end, 1700, the 1700X, and the 1800X, again, all R7s, and the prices for those in order, $330 for the R7 1700, 400 for the 1700X, and 500 for the 1800X. Before getting to the core specifications for the rest of the products, this coverage is brought to you by our Patreon backers at patreon.com slash gamersnexus. If you want to help fund more on-site coverage like this. For each of these chips, we're looking at the Ryzen R7 1700 at 3.0 gigahertz for its base and 3.7 for boost. There's also XFR for these products, of course, but we don't have full specifications of that just yet. Let's go through the specs for each of the three chips that was announced today. The R7 1700, all of these are eight cores and 16 threads. Its base is 3.0 gigahertz, boost is 3.7, and TDP is 65 watts, and that's the $330 chip. The R7 1700X, also eight cores, 16 threads, 3.4 gigahertz base, 3.8 boost, 95 watt TDP at $400. And the 1800X is a 3.6 gigahertz chip base and boosts to 4.0. Again, there's some XFR headroom in there as well that we'll talk about more in the review, which is forthcoming. Uh, and that's the 95 watt TDP chip as well at $500. In terms of availability, these are all supposed to be available on March 2nd. So that's when they will actually be available to purchase. Uh, probably our review will go live around the same time or on that day. These will technically be available for pre-order as of today, but as always, we recommend waiting for our review no matter what the product is, game, hardware, software, Wait for the review before pre-ordering just because that's the wise thing to do. So we would recommend waiting even though pre-orders are open. AMD says there should be availability and that product availability shouldn't be a problem. Of course, it could sell out, but even still, better to just wait on the pre-orders. In terms of other items of note from this presentation, uh, the main one is just that we're looking at a stack of uh, R7 chips that are supposed to compete with Intel's i7s. So the 1700 is supposed to compete with the 7700K KB Lake chip in terms of direct head-to-head -head pricing and performance competition. The 1700X at $400 is more of a 6800K competitor, and the 1800X at 500 is more of a competitor to the $1,000 Intel chips like the 6900K. Also at the editor's day in San Francisco, AMD ran the usual listing of benchmarks, so Cinebench would be the main one. And side-by-side -side performance comparisons with Intel CPUs are similar to what we've seen at previous Editor's Day events, like the Sonoma one, uh, but they were kind of reiterated here. Now these are all, the numbers we're about to show you are all AMD internal, so again, usual grain of salt with uh, manufacturer benchmark. We'll run our own, of course, but to give you an idea of where things stack up from AMD's own testing, we're looking at the R7 1700X placing a CB score of 1537 with the system that they used, and the i7-6900K placing a CB score of 1474. So that's a slight improvement on AMD's side. Uh, the R7-1700 versus the i7-7700K is a lot more interesting. That one has the 1700 at 1410 CB marks, and the 7700K at 967 CB marks. So quite a big difference there. Uh, we don't know the exact uh, configuration of the systems, things like that. So, hand around for our benchmarks, but that gives you a baseline idea, at least, of where AMD projects its performance to land. And uh, there were also some other ad hoc benchmarks, like there was a Sniper Elite demo where we saw some gameplay of Sniper Elite. It's really just a side-by-side -side to give a, a general idea of these two processors from AMD and from Intel perform more or less the same. I wouldn't read too far into any hard FPS numbers you see out of that demo because it's not like it was run in a, a contained scientific environment. There were different uh, objects and geometry on screen for one CPU than the other. And when you have a whole bunch of skybox on the screen, it's going to favor the processor with all the skybox on the screen. So I'll leave that there, uh, wait for the game benchmarks again from us. But they had one that showed somewhat comparable performance, and we've seen that before with Battlefield 1 at CES and at a previous uh, AMD Editor's Day event. So that's most of the basics. There's more advanced architecture stuff we'll cover in the review. Uh, the main thing here is that this is a departure. Zen is moving away from the bulldozer architecture of having a shared floating point unit per core or per module. It is now a private FP unit, private SIMD, 
private L2 cache for each core, and that should help a lot with floating point performance, which with games is critical, and with overall performance and power efficiency. Uh, that's the main item of note. There's a, there are a few other things that are known. David Cantor's piece for microprocessor report details a lot of this, like the micro-op cache, which should help reduce x86 instruction overhead. There's also a redesigned L1 cache, and uh, everything's, of course, aiming for lower power, more efficiency, stuff like that. So, as always, article in the description below for more information on some of the basics of the architecture. Check back probably around the second or on the second for our full review. And uh, uh, otherwise, stack up looks pretty good right now. It's all eight core, 16 threads. That's what they're gunning for for the future. Um, clock speeds look competitive, and the initial Cinebench data, even if it's from AMD, does look competitive. So uh, it looks like a good product overall to keep an eye on. GamersNexus.net for more information, patreon.com slash GamersNexus to help us out directly. Subscribe for more. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.